To finish up talking about the reactivity of carbon nucleophiles with ketones and aldehydes, I want to move to a unique class of carbon nucleophiles called ILIDs. And ILIDs are unique structurally because they contain two oppositely charged atoms with opposite formal charges of different elements adjacent to one another. And the reason we're bringing up ILIDs here is that the Y atom, the anionic atom, is very often a carbon atom. The formally positively charged atom is typically a heteroatom from group 15 or 16. So common elements are phosphorus, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur here. And the ILID is a unique structure for a few different reasons. The first thing we should notice is that the anionic Y atom, which typically bears a non-bonding lone pair if Y is carbon, is nucleophilic. This atom is nucleophilic because it's a good electron donor. It's got a non-bonding pair of electrons that it wants to donate to an electrophile. On the other hand, if we look at X+, plus, we can see this as a potential nucleophuge, noting that being positively charged, the X atom kind of wants to depart with a pair of electrons, departing as a leaving group or nucleophuge. If we think about what this means for Y, the other atom involved in the ILID structure, this leads to an interesting and kind of confusing conclusion that the Y atom has the potential to accept electrons and act as an electrophile. So we've got kind of schizophrenic reactivity, we might say, in the ILID, right? On the one hand, it looks like Y can accept electrons, right? We could do kind of an SN2 type process where a nucleophile donates a pair of electrons to Y and the YX bond breaks toward X, which with a positive charge is likely a good leaving group. On the other hand, if we focus on the fact that being anionic and being carbon, the Y atom has a non-bonding lone pair, it looks like this atom is nucleophilic. It looks like it should donate that pair of electrons to an electrophile. The Y atom looks both nucleophilic and electrophilic at the same time. And this is actually essential to the reactivity of illets. Because of this kind of dual behavior, their ability to both accept and donate electrons, they tend to engage in addition reactions. Another hint that they engage in addition reactions comes from an alternative resonance form of the illid structure where we take this lone pair on the anionic Y atom and we use it to form a pi bond with the X atom. The resulting structure is neutral at both X and Y, but typically the X atom in this resonance form is violating the octet rule. So for example, and we'll see some examples here in a second, but if X is phosphorus, typically that phosphorus is connected to four other groups or atoms in this structure, and so it has five bonds in the resulting neutral resonance form, and so the X atom, the phosphorus, violates the octet rule. Although this resonance form violates the octet rule, one thing we should notice is that this allows us to draw an analogy between the ILID and alkenes, which of course also undergo addition reactions. We can think of alkenes as nucleophilic at one of the carbon atoms and electrophilic at the other, and ILIDs act similarly. The Y atom with negative charge acts as a nucleophile, and the X atom has the potential to act as an electrophile. So the most important conclusion we can draw from making this analogy to alkenes is that ILIDs undergo addition reactions. Additions, for example, to the Y atom or additions of X and Y to an alkene or alkyne are common. Let's look at some examples of ILID structures. In the sulfonium ILID, the X atom is sulfur, and we have two R groups linked to the sulfur atom as well as the anionic ILID carbon. The ILID carbon bears a non-bonding lone pair, and the ILID sulfur also bears a lone pair. We can draw a resonant structure of the sulfonium ILID in which all of the atoms are now neutral, but sulfur violates the octet rule. And we generate this resonance form just by pushing the lone pair on carbon into a new pi bond with sulfur. In the ammonium ILID, we have a nitrogen atom with positive charge linked to three groups as well as the ILID carbon. The ILID carbon, again, has a non-bonding lone pair. And here, we really don't even want to think about that alternative resonance form with five bonds to nitrogen, since it doesn't violate the octet rule in this way. Nonetheless, we can still think about it using this general ILID paradigm here with a nucleophilic carbon atom and a potential nucleophuge or leaving group in the cationic NR3 plus group. The phosphonium ILID is going to be the most important for us moving forward because it's the basis of the Wittig reaction with carbonyl compounds. And just like the sulfonium ILID, we can draw this in a neutral resonance form in which phosphorus violates the octet rule, but all atoms are neutral. In each of these three examples, the cationic heteroatom 
is saturated, that is, it involves only single bonds, but it can also be involved in double or even triple bonds. So for example, in the azomethine illid, it's analogous to the ammonium illid, except instead of having single bonds to the cationic nitrogen atom, we have a double bond. In this illid, one thing to notice is that there are multiple nucleophilic positions, since we can delocalize this lone pair on this carbon to the carbon on the left through electron flow like this. And so here we have an example of an illid with multiple nucleophilic sites. The carbonyl illid is the oxygen analog of the azomethine illid. It's the exact same structure with oxygen replacing the NR group. And here again, we have multiple nucleophilic positions since the lone pair can be delocalized over both carbons linked to the oxygen atom. To highlight how we generate illids in actual reactions and think about using them in mechanisms, I wanted to look at an epoxidation reaction that takes advantage of illid reactivity, starting from a carbonyl and involving the formation of a CO bond and a CC bond to perform epoxidation. The typical way we generate an illid is we start with the conjugate acid of the illid, in which there's a hydrogen linked to the carbon that we want to become anionic. We treat that acid with a base. Here it's potassium hydride, or KH. And this combination results in the formation of the illid through a proton transfer step. And this generates the lone pair on what will become the illid carbon, and it makes that carbon anionic at the same time. When we combine an illid, such as a sulfonium illid, with an electrophilic compound, like a carbonyl compound, the result is a reaction between the electrophilic carbonyl carbon and the nucleophilic illid carbon. And in this reaction, this epoxidation reaction, which by the way is called the cori tchaikovsky epoxidation, this is the key step that forges the carbon-carbon bond, an AD sub N elementary step, nucleophilic addition of the anionic carbon to the electrophilic carbonyl carbon. In the intermediate that results, we now have a carbon linked to a good leaving group that was formerly part of the illid, the SPH2 plus group. This is a good leaving group or nucleophuge because the sulfur can depart with a pair of electrons and become neutral. At the same time, the addition has generated a decent nucleophile in the anionic oxygen. And so in a step that's completely intramolecular, the oxygen can displace the SPH2 group in an SN2 elementary step. This step generates the epoxide product and also generates the byproduct, diphenyl sulfide, or PH2S, or SPH2. On the whole, notice what's happened to the illid carbon. What kind of reaction has it undergone? Well, it's formed two bonds to the carbonyl compound, and as a consequence, it's an addition reaction, actually, from the perspective of both the illid carbon and the carbonyl compound, this is an addition process. And it all stems from the fact that the illid carbon is both nucleophilic, notice in the first step, it acts as a nucleophile, and electrophilic. In the second step, it acts as an electrophile. This means that it can form two bonds in one reaction. This typically corresponds to an addition process. In the Wittig reaction, which we'll cover in detail in the next video, we'll see an addition process followed by elimination that results in net substitution of an illid for a different atom.